Welcome to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to be talking about Predator 5, also known as Skulls. Uh, I, I did a live stream on this, uh, speaking about a casting call, which had character details and things like that. Um, but we've got a little bit more information, and for those that weren't aware uh, of the previous information, I'll go over it again, because uh, not everyone attends live streams, and not everyone gets notified of live streams. It's one of those kind of uneasy... Just saying YouTube being drunk permanently uh, things. So look, it is what it is. Uh, but Skulls is what this film has been going by uh, for quite some time, actually. It's been in the works for over four years now. Like a really, really long time. And it's by Dan Tra Tra Tracton? Tracton? Trachtenberg. Um, good director. Good director. Worked on 10 Cloverfield Lane. And that's, that's primarily where I know him from. And I, th I think I, I thought it was a fantastic film. I thought it was great. This film definitely does have some red flags, and we'll go into that uh, shortly. Um, it's also it also seems pretty paint by numbers in terms of some of the narrative elements as well. Um, I, I'm not overly sure whether I think this will be a good Predator movie, but there's some things that are good going for it. Uh, and just from the off, a lot of people will be going, "Oh, it's Disney! It's not Disney." This was in the works and was greenlit under Fox. Um, now, there's nothing to say that Disney wouldn't change stuff. Of course, um, but it was greenlit under Fox, so we'll see. And story would have been greenlit under Fox as well. You can't change the story that much, uh, but it just so happens that obviously Disney uh, approved of it as well. So this is on avpgalaxy.net, a uh, fantastic website. I'll leave a link down below. Please do go and check them out. They're friends of the channel, uh, and I've been on some of their. I think I've been on two of their podcasts. I think. Um, they're really good. They're really good guys. Like them a lot. Um, so please do go and uh, support them. But let's check it out, right? So for, first and foremost is that it's actually going to be starting to film in May, which is huge. Uh, that means it could be released next year. You know, next year basically. That that is huge. That's massive. That's a lot sooner than I think we all thought because the initial casting call that was going around was actually from. Of January of last year last year uh, and on the live stream uh, someone posed the question well could it be out this year then and I'm like well not unless they've been filming in secret um, but or maybe they even asked could it be filming this year but hey look I mean it's now, it's now that it is going to be filming this year which is crazy um, I, I am surprised by this I thought that this would be one of those movies that's kind of put on the back burner because um, if you didn't know, Hollywood productions have had to, each production, so they, they all obviously have their production budget, they've had to increase that by 20%, a 20 additional percent, and then some as well in some instances, uh, due to the COVID situation. Uh, and it's just ballooning budgets way out of proportion, way, 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 and also way out of what they'd initially agreed. So some of these projects that had begun are done, like they're not happening. And I thought that this might be one of them. I'm very happy that it's not, though. So Predator fans certainly have something to look forward to this year, hot on the heels of the recent news revealing some insight into the two main characters featured in the upcoming Predator 5, also known as Skulls. Alien vs Predator Galaxy have now exclusively learned that the Dan Trachten Trachtenberg directed film is tentatively scheduled to begin shooting in just a few months. That's big. Um, I would say that this maybe implies that there, there's a whole bunch of unknowns, which is fine. Like, who cares that the actors are unknowns? It's fine. I always think that having some unknown actors are actually the best possible um, approaches to go down, especially with a franchise that is, unfortunately, a bit washed up at this point in time. Because if you go for unknowns, then you're going to focus more on the story, and it also means that the story has to be good. So if you do end up liking it, you're appreciating it, you're, you're appreciating it because of the story. Now, if Arnold Schwarzenegger came back to uh, a Predator movie, you probably will just like it because it's just Arnold. And that's that doesn't do the franchise any good. Um, so I do think having unknowns is actually a good thing. And that's, I think, what this indicates to me. Now, produced by Davis Entertainment, the fifth Predator film is slated to begin filming in the middle of May 2021 in Calgary, Canada. So, guys, those that are around that area, uh, and you obviously you're watching this, so, again... I'm addressing you directly. If you see any of this filming, please do snap it, video it, send it to me. 
I, I would love to hear it. Uh, you can email it to me at mistakesreviews at gmail.com. You can always find my email address down below in the description box. Side note, there's also memberships on the channel as well as Patreon if you want to support. Uh, that's all linked down below. Now, um, so and along with this tentative production slate, we also have another peek into the story of the film via this production synopsis. So they've actually released an official production synopsis. Now, the thing is, with this production synopsis, is it's... It's very, very close to what we had character breakdowns. And this is what's the sort of red flag. But I want to say a few things first and foremost, because, you know, this is just being objective. First and foremost, it being set in the past is great. That's awesome. Fantastic. But it also poses really difficult questions um, in terms of arming the characters and the Predator. Because they still have technology, clearly, because the Predators have come to the planet to hunt. So if that's the case, why would they, they're going to nerf themselves by removing uh, their weaponry, which we know that they have, we know that they don't do that because we've seen it in the original Predator. So it would almost go against some of the law uh, a little bit uh, if they just removed the weaponry. There are a few other ways of doing it. You know, you could have a young blood Predator coming to come of age and things like this. There's so many different ways you could approach it. But being said in the past is good. I like it. Now, the main character is a girl. Uh, and her name is No. Literally, it's Key, which is translated as No. And she gets that nickname because she is just argumentative. She's rebellious. Um, she's very much the archetype that Hollywood has loved for so very long recently. Um, and sadly, as much as I think Dan Trachtenberg is fantastic uh, in dealing with strong females, because he is, 10 Cloverfield Lane, uh, Mary, Elis Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Yeah, I think that's her name. You know, you know, you know. I can't remember the actor. I always think Mary Jane Elizabeth Winstead. And I don't know why, but Mary Elizabeth Winstead um, is great. She's great in that. She's fantastic, and it's, there's a sense of looming terror around it. John Goodman put on a, a staggering performance in that film. A true horror, um, just from the interpersonal element of that film, was great. So anyway, that's a red flag. Key archetype it's a bit lame and you'll see it here this is the production synopsis the story will follow key a comanche woman who goes against gender norms oh, come on can we just have something that doesn't have that in it now i don't care that we have strong females some of the best feet some of the best movie franchises we've had have strong females as the lead terminator for instance alien for instance um but come on be a little bit more original now that like we have had it a lot recently i don't i don't need to see a comanche warrior going against gender norms like it's just odd to me so anyway key goes against gender norms and traditions to become a warrior many years ago in a time before and this is the other part that is concerning why why this is part of the production synopsis i've got no idea many years ago in a time before any Europeans had ever encroached on their lands, the Comanche people had a well-defined society and gender norms. What? What? Many years ago, in a time before any Europeans had ever encroached on their lands, the Comanche people had a well-defined society and gender norms. Unless we're going to see Europeans colonising in this film, I don't see the relevance to it. It's very strange. Again, red flag, it's just just odd. Uh, Key is very close to her younger brother, Tabe, who is being groomed as a leader. As capable as any young man in the tribe, Key has always been a teacher and source of inspiration for Tabe. In the Comanche way, she is Patsy, the elder sister that has helped to shape him. Key is a truth teller and has insight that others do not. A tomboy, because of course she is. She wants to prove herself in the masculine world of the Comanche. When danger threatens them all, Key sets out to prove that she is as capable as any young warrior. One, why does she? Why does she need to be a tomboy? Like this again? What's? I, I don't. I, again, I just find it. The fact that it's there as a production synopsis is just... You know that it's first and foremost in the film and it's going to be quite a heavy presence. Um, 
the weird commentary about Europeans encroaching on their lands. Like, I get it, it was part and parcel of history. I'm just a bit confused with what it's got to do with this story, and if it is a prominent element when we've got, you know, an alien from out of space coming to kill everyone. And then if it is a prominent element, because that's why they've mentioned it, then that sounds bloated and crap. Like, it's just weird. Um, and then this is the thing, you know, when danger threatens them all, Key, the tomboy, the woman going against gender norms, is the one that goes out to prove herself. It's like, well, why? So anyway, to me, it just sounds like Tabe is going to go out on a hunt, get killed, and then Key, the truth teller, is going to go out and apparently murder a 350, 400-pound, 7-foot super alien. Yeah. Anyway, we'll soon find out. We'll soon find out. Now, normally Studio ADI does all of the casting work for their creature effects, the casting creature effects. Um, but I would really like uh, the guys who did the uh, Crucified Predator in uh, in Predators. He was great. I'd like to. I like. I like them to do it. To be honest, I think that'd be awesome. Give someone else a try for a change. Studio ADI is good, but give someone else a try. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on all this down below. It seems a bit odd, I'm sure you can agree. Let me know your thoughts, give the video a like and a share. Cheers, take care.